Oh, did you see the wrestlers, guys? The United States just won the Freestyle World Championship, which I think represents the fourth time ever. I mean, this is hard to do, right? You got to beat every country on the globe. It is truly a championship of earth. Every single country is welcome to send a delegation, and a lot of them do. You win a world championship, right? These aren't just terms. This isn't a belt handed out into the night. This is a colossal effort, a lifetime effort by everybody involved. Training partners, athletes themselves, all of the a lifetime for a shot at achievement, which they got. Did you see them today? They had this huge parade. They had this huge parade. They're coming down Broadway. All the cameras were here. No, no, I'm just, I'm just teasing. They didn't do that, but Sports Illustrated did a big thing on them. And Wheaties is going to put the team right on the box. Right, they never see wrestlers on the box, right? Except for Gail Sanderson. They're going to put the whole team because they're world champions. No, no, I, I, I'm just kidding. None of those things happen. None of those things are in the discussion to happen. Now, those guys have earned it. And so is their leadership and so is their coach. Why can't they get there? I mean, think of the achievement I just told you. The United States, that's you guys. That's not this one team. Right, you see the Patriots win it. See Green Bay go, and when they go out to the White House, they get, that's one city gets to be happy. One city gets to be happy and proud. This is America. The whole country gets to be proud. All of you guys, all of you, that is how wrestling works. By the way, that's how the wrestlers look at it. Believe me, Tampa and Grit, they don't, look, they don't look at you at all. They go look at their own bank accounts and think it's cool that they get to go meet the president. These guys would have actually been grateful. These guys actually would have been appreciative. These guys actually would have made you, they would have thanked you. Green Bay, hey, thank you, guys. You get, Tom Brady gets thanked. These wrestlers, they would have thanked you. You'd have felt part of it. Would have been something special. Doesn't happen. How come? And I want to juxtapose that, guys. Because why wrestling can't take off and how you're going to market wrestling. I mean, every few years, we get some guy that comes in the room and he's going to be the one to do it. And, and then he's gone. He's gone a year later. I don't have the foggiest idea what he's doing. And we will never have that person until they have an end with somebody that has distribution, right? Once a vice president at ESPN's grandson makes that world team, okay, well, then we can get him, but it's going to have to be something like that. And you're going to hear these guys, every couple, they're, they're the new guy, and they're going to, they know, mar they, they took marketing in college. <laughs> We've had a few of those. I got a marketing degree from Ohio State. This one guy came out and said that. Okay. I want to juxtapose that, though, with what we just saw with Abu Dhabi, because you are going to succeed in telling me that you don't love to watch wrestling. You're going to succeed in doing that. I, I do understand. I'm going to have an argument of, yeah, but let me watch it a few times. Let me explain the characters. Let me tell you what's going on between Dake and Burroughs. Let me just tell you that's one story. Let me tell you about Yazdani and David Taylor that are on a collision course. Let me tell you the story, and then you tell me you're not interested in seeing that. You're not going to convince me, and I'll, I'll drink to the fact that guys don't love wrestling. I, I, I understand that. But you won't convince me that you care to watch jujitsu more than you do wrestling. That, that's not a proven fact. Jujitsu also doesn't have distribution. They're also not on SI. They're not going to the Weeds box. I mean, they're in a very similar spot, and they have all sorts of problems. They really do. Number one problem is that no two events have the same rule set, but you're not going to convince me that those are, are, are tragically different. But jujitsu just sold out the Thomas and Mack Center on the campus of UNLV. Now think about what Abu Dhabi did. You really have to think about that. Let me tell you what Abu Dhabi had to do, and let me tell you what they were expected to do. Bring out mats on a floor and have an organization that can tell who, when they're up. That's all they were expected to do. That's what Abu Dhabi has been every single year. So they go fit, sell 15,000. I don't know what that is at a gate. Let's call it a million dollars. I don't actually have that. They go, do a, they go do the biggest gate in grappling history. All they have to do, it's going to cost about 8,000 bucks. It's going to cost them 12,000 bucks to bring in the really nice mats, have somebody roll those up, take those away. At the end of this, bring in all the clocks and the tables. You're going to have a setup fee of about, you could do it for eight grand, but you could also be up to, to 12 grand. This is what they were expected to do. That's what they had to do. They chose to bring in a $200,000 production. They chose to do that. 
They looked around, they saw all the tickets, they saw the interest, and they bring in a $200,000 worth of screens, worth of pyro, worth of ramps, worth of bells and whistles. That was a cool move. And it's hard to know which one you're going to do first, right? Wrestling is not presented in this real exciting way, but wrestling doesn't have the money. You got to build to that. You got to work to that. That's okay. But it's also the world's oldest sport. How much time do we need, right? Basketball had to work to that too. Baseball and football, they all had to work to that. They didn't have near as much time as wrestling did. And how is jujitsu? That's that same fringe. It's that same niche, except jujitsu is not in the junior highs. It's not in the high schools. You can't get a college scholarship. Can't do it in the Olympics. How are they holding a $200,000 production with a million dollar gate and 15,000 tickets sold? And we, as a nation, aren't supporting our wrestlers. I'm, I'm just asking the question. I'm frustrated about it, but who am I frustrated with? What have I done? Very little. And what have you guys done? Very little. We're all in the same spot. So when I'm over here yelling at you, at leadership, and, and, and me, I'm yelling, with, with, what have we done? And when are we going to do it? And why isn't it working? This is a day-old question. This isn't something new. We have a new leader of our Greco program who's awesome. Awesome business guy, awesome wrestler, awesome mind, awesome coach. Hey, general manager is what they're calling him. But I don't believe that Tracy Hancock retired. Personal belief. Just chail talking. No proof. I don't think he retired. I believe the general manager kicked him off the team. And for PR, we, right, they gave him the opportunity to retire. That's what I believe. Tracy Hancock made the team. Two out of three in the finals. He finished the guy twice. It was a combined score of 18 to zero. Hancock is a returning medalist. And just before the World Championships, he retired. I don't believe that. Hancock, just so you guys understand, signed with Vince. Vince was going around before Vince did this pretend that he stepped down, but and Vince was signing wrestlers. Gable Steeson comes to mind. But he went around, he signed a whole bunch of guys, and Hancock was one of them. Put him on a minimum contract, it's 150 grand a year. But all you have to do is go out to the training center in Florida with the NXT program. And learn how to wrestle. That's all you got to do. Well, Tracy loved it. He got into it. He was excited. All of his hard work finally got recognized. That beautiful body that he spent 20 years building. The recognition, the skills, as limited as they were, somebody finally noticed and they rewarded him. Tracy got excited. And Tracy was putting a lot of time into doing that. We got the world championships coming up. I believe that the general manager, believe this with no evidence. I believe that the general manager took a look and said, Tracy, you're a captain. You're a leader of this team. You're setting a bad example. You're not doing what the rest of the guys were doing. He wasn't coming to wrestling camp. He's out here doing the wrestling training, pro wrestling training. Says so a bad example, and I need you to retire. I want to bring in the backup. I don't want you to go. I want to set a precedent. That's what I think happened. And the only reason that, that concerns me is, first off, that's not a real team, just so you understand. They're guys that are good at matching singlets. They won the two out of three. As a matter of fact, your real team didn't make the team. Your real team got beat out by these guys that were just calling a team. I see team bonding. I see all of these things with this team. It's not a real team. It's important that you understand that, though. wonder where we get off base on wrestling. Well, it starts with the psychology. The world team's not a real team. They got put together. They got eight weeks. They live in all different areas. They're going to come in and do a uh, camp and get on an airplane together. That's okay. But make sure that you understand that. Because if you're removing Tracy for setting a bad example, that's a real thing. I've done that before as a coach, but I was coaching nine-year-olds in T-ball. These are, these are men. These are grown men. I don't know of anything in the USAW bylaws. I don't know. And again, I'm speaking a little out of turn over here. But I don't know anything within the bylaws that gives USAW the right to kick a guy off a team. So they talked the guy into saying that he was retired. Now that, they can bring the backup in, but I don't believe that it was by choice. I believe it was by force. Why do I believe that? Well, because Vince McMahon likes wrestling. Vince McMahon went and bought these wrestlers because he likes wrestling. He realizes it's not a huge spotlight, but he's paying Gable Stevenson millions of dollars, and he's not putting him in the ring. Gable Stevenson could be headlining WrestleMania that next year. He will be the biggest thing
thing you've ever seen in wrestling, and he's ready to go right now. His clock is ticking. He could headline Mania, be the youngest guy to have ever done it. Vince sent him back to Minnesota. Whatever attention he can get on the Big Ten Network, at the NCAA tournament on ESPN, whatever attention he could get, Vince wants that. And he's paying him to go back to wrestling. That's a fact. So I don't believe that Vince, who Tracy's going to listen to, told him, step down so I can have you in a practice room. Don't go to the world championship. Don't go to the biggest thing. Don't go and bring home more hardware. It's good for Gable, but it's not good for you. I don't believe that. I believe what I just said is what happened. Now, like any rule, if somebody tells you something and you don't go lawyer up or you don't go learn the rule, then that's what happens. You, you have to fight it. Tracy probably got the call, probably didn't like it and said, well, they're forcing me to retire. Okay, I'm going to retire. Put the phone down. He could have challenged it. And the only reason that's relevant, this would have been our opportunity. We don't look at this as bad, Tracy, you're not here. We go take the cameras and we bring the reporters out there. We film them. We show kids all over the world. This is what it's about. If you work hard, if you reach your goals, if you get recognition, if you focus, you can also make it in an actual career to multi-millions of dollars and be in front of the whole world. You're going to be in small rooms now. You're going to be in small rooms. But if you make it, look at this guy. Look at Tracy Hancock. That's how that story should have been told.